Hi, uh, we are at RSA and uh, I'm really excited to have a friend of mine, Jeremy. He's the CTO of IntelliSecure. And uh, Jeremy, obviously we have, thank you very much for being here. Uh, if you remember, we started this journey around about three years back and Matt Moyan, our CEO, started the human-centric uh, behavior technology, which was the base of our foundation. And obviously it's great to see that RSA is running the same theme this year. Yes. Where do you see the market going and how you feel about uh, the, the cybersecurity market? Yeah, it's really interesting because a lot of people look at the changes in the marketplace as you know, a negative or certain things are dying off and a, and a lot of people are concerned they don't know what the future holds. But to me it's a really exciting time in the cybersecurity space because for the first time in the history of, of the space we're starting to see a maturity in thinking. It's a little bit different than how we've historically addressed problems. A lot of the security technologies were developed to stop one bad thing from happening. The problem with that is really what we're dealing with is an adversary, whether it be an internal or an external adversary. And adversaries are adaptable and they can change. So they can circumvent any individual strategy we have to stop any individual thing. And when I look at it from a military perspective, having a military background, we would never secure anything that way, right? And so I'm starting to see that the, the industry and the space and the buyers are starting to come around to the idea that we can't necessarily predict every bad thing that's going to happen. There's literally millions, maybe an infinite number of combinations of ways people can attack us. But what we can do is we can define what is good, what should be happening in terms of human behavior. The other thing that I always take as a universal truth in security is that you may not be able to tell exactly what's going to change from a good to a bad scenario, but in order from some, for something to go from being good or authorized to being bad or not authorized, that behavior has to change. So being able to monitor the behavior and say, okay, this is good behavior, now we're going to put that into our model. Anything outside of that, anything that deviates from that normal behavior is something we need to investigate. We're not qualitatively saying it's bad, we're just saying it needs to be looked into. And that's going to give us a lot better ways to look at when a person goes from a well-meaning insider to an insider threat as well as when an external adversary is impersonating one of our people because we're not just monitoring the behavior of people we're monitoring the behavior of credentials and accounts so when we start to, to identify what people should be doing and how they do their job then we can much easier identify when people are going outside those bounds and it gives us a much better chance to proactively secure our environment rather than buying a new tool every time there's a new threat that's a that's a great point one thing which, which I am seeing quite a lot in the industry is the how does humans, human behavior make a lot of impact. From your perspective, how do you see Forcepoint adding value to your entire business cycle by bringing this technology to life? Yeah, I, sometimes I say things that aren't popular or, or that, don't make, that don't make friends out of, uh, out of a lot of people in the space. And one of the things I say that's, that's really not popular is about behavioral analytics. From the beginning, behavioral analytics had a lot of potential. But I always said if, if behavioral analytics is just another screen for someone to monitor that they're never going to look at, it's absolutely useless. In order for behavioral analytics to mean anything in a modern security posture, it has to be bidirectional. And I think that's where Forcepoint's really leading the charge to be able to say, not only are we going to tell you who's behaving in a risky manner, we're going to allow the machine to adapt to that risky behavior and stop that bad thing from happening before a human being could ever react. And a lot of what my customers are talking about is how do I take my reaction from human time, which is slow, there's SLAs, maybe it's a day, maybe it's an hour until I respond if I'm lucky, but that's not fast enough to actually stop anything from walking out the door, it just helps me do an investigation as to what happened. How do I change that to machine time where it's seconds or milliseconds to be able to adapt to a change in behavior. And I think that's the promise of, of what Forcepoint's delivering with the human-centric cybersecurity story. So Jeremy, one other question was, obviously you have been, we have been partners for a long time. And we have gone through an evolution in the last couple of months and a year, and we are starting a frictionless journey. What is your message to the partner community as a, as a key partner of ours? Where, where do you see Forcepoint adding value to your business? Well, I think the, the real opportunity for organizations, especially your new partners that are coming from other technologies and maybe legacy approaches, is to redefine themselves as thought leaders to their customers. Bottom line is, what we're talking about is a fundamentally new approach for how you're going to secure your environment and how you're going to keep pace with threats that isn't as dependent on having the latest and greatest of anything, right? It's, it's more dependent on when a new threat comes out, you're already protected because you're monitoring what's good, you're freeing the good while stopping the bad. So I think it's an opportunity to help your, the organizations that you work with take a step forward into the future rather than continuing the, the legacy approaches that they've had in the past. So the, another question which I have for you, obviously, I want to hear from you, from the horse's mouth, to be honest with you. How do you see we are adding value to you from, from overall making IntelliSecure successful? 
Yeah, well, it's really critically important for me in the overall space. There's a lot of times organizations look at partners all as the same thing, right? Um, and there are different roles that different partners can play in your ecosystem to make you successful and ultimately the customer successful. Um, and, and I'll get to, to how Forcepoint's actually enabling that in a moment. But, you know, there, there are partners that you guys absolutely need that have relationships, that, that can transact business, have, have paper with partners, but don't necessarily have services. Right? And then there are partners like us who have services, but I've got a handful of field sellers. I'm not necessarily going to walk you into a lot of new accounts. But what I find refreshing about how Forcepoint is approaching this is we're starting to build a community where you can pair me with one of those resellers. All three of the organizations together can add value and deliver great outcomes for the customer. Rather than forcing the customer to choose between having to contract with an organization that they've never worked with before or having to take substandard services from an organization who doesn't focus on that part of their business. So for me, creating that, that, that three-pronged infrastructure in the partner community is exciting and refreshing and absolutely important to the overall success of our joint customers. And are you finding our relationship profitable for your business? Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is absolutely a key strategic relationship for us, and I see it as a growth engine for us moving forward. The fact that we're able to now implement things like behavioral-based technology and as well as the legacy technologies that we've had and put them all into a single package gives us more services opportunity and more licenses revenue opportunity ultimately. And the last thing is, before we leave, obviously our focus has been, as you know, predictability, protect your business and the third was profit. You talked about the profit. Do you think we are being predictable in our approach as far as going to the market is concerned? Yeah, absolutely. The engagement has been fantastic. We've seen, you know, since you guys have put new leadership in place, it's been stable. We've been able to continue to interact with the same people. You guys have communicated with us proactively, which is extraordinarily important. And I think some of the things that you guys have done from a engagement with your partner's perspective, having us out at SKO so we can hear the messaging at the same time as your salespeople, making sure we're engaging at the field level, putting everyone in contact with each other has been hugely important because ultimately, uh, in a lot of ways, we're helping to amplify your message and we should be as partners. And so knowing what the message is going to be and how it changes, hearing what Matt has to say and the rest of the team, Matt Pressure and as well, has to say about what, how you guys are going to market is important for us to be able to reinforce that message out to the marketplace as well. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I look Thank forward to working with you. Thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers.